news today, college basketball, Ivy League, first league to cancel their college basketball season, actually canceling all winter sports. So <laughs> we know what happened the last time Ivy League canceled something. The whole market closed down, but I don't know if I see this happening. I mean, Ivy League just doesn't make as much money as these other leagues. It's like college football. They first canceled and then college football still went on. So I am your host, Aaron Bell, Sports Talk for you. Before we get started with this Ivy League and college basketball, be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you see a little head here in the corner, it's just my son. Don't worry about it. Pay no attention to him. If he talks, I'm sorry. But uh, so, again, Ivy League cancels. <clears throat> College basketball is talking about some teams I know in New York. I think possibly Florida going to bubbles. Um, you know, it's COVID-19. What do we do in the year 2020? So buckle up and enjoy the ride the best you can, right? <laughs> exactly. No, but uh... – Anyway, yeah, no, I mean, Ivy League canceled football. Weren't they one of the first ones to do that? And look, we still well, have football. Well, yeah, that, they Actually. were the first one to cancel their uh, conference tournament. And then after right. that, it seemed like everybody just canceled left and right. So, right. right. So, anywho, you know, basketball will still be going on um, to the best of their ability. Should they try a bubble system? Sure, they probably could. I mean, what would it hurt, you know? Um, no one's allowed fans in the Pac-12, you know. So if you want to move a team to, say, Vegas for a bubble, so be it, you know. Uh, I'm up for anything. I love college basketball. and I believe if they want to keep college basketball, I'd just say no fans at all in any stadium. I mean, that's just my thing. If you want to keep it going and don't want no COVID test. Mm -hmm. The thing is, it's not even fans getting COVID. It's all these players. Yeah. You don't hear of fans getting COVID. No, except for that one time, the Chiefs game, the very first game where one fan <laughs> tested positive. Yes. God bless that person. But everybody else, you know, seems to be doing fine. You know, it's just like you said, mainly the players. But, um, you know, they could do a bubble system and then maybe for March Madness, you know, bring in maybe 25% of the fans or whatever just for exactly. fun. I you think know? I heard right. As of now, I believe WSU is allowing 3,500, but that I don't know for sure. All I know is season ticket holders are not happy because a lot of them aren't getting their season ticket seats and they're getting right. them taken away or they have to, like, you know, mm -hmm. donate them to the say so organization or something like that. Right. But I just know a lot of fans aren't happy about it. So it's going to be interesting to see how these universities handle their season tickets and how many fans they're going to make mad. So, yeah. And you know what, speaking of Wichita State, you know, um, Greg Marshall or no Greg Marshall, you guys still have a really good team. Oh, yeah. And, you know, so like they said, you know, it's, it's not going to hurt the team. I mean, like Bob Litz said here in Wichita on the drive show, you know, when Turgeon left, people thought, oh, this college is, we're going to suck again. We're going to be back in the 90s. Marshall comes in, has a bad first year because he doesn't have any good players. And then look what happens three, four years later, you know. He gets yeah. us to the NCAA tournament seven straight years. Yeah. I mean, people just people got to stop freaking out. And even if he does get suspended or does get fired – Isaac Brown, I believe, will be the interim, and he's going to be a hell of a coach. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not really worried about this. You know, if Marshall gets fired, okay, he's paying for his actions. If he gets suspended, he's still paying for his actions. So I'm not worried about it. I believe WSU will do the right thing and find the right coach if they have to find another coach. Right, and I believe that as well, you know, and uh, – I mean, just be thankful, you know, that, I mean, it's still bad, as bad of a case as it is for Marshall. At least you haven't had a FBI cloud over your university the way University of Arizona has. With you, Sean that. you get a two-month investigation know? and something's coming out about Marshall, but yet Sean mm -hmm. Miller's been on investigation for three years. Bill three Sutton's years. been on investigation for a year now and still yep. seem to come out in those invest. Will Wade, let's not forget about him. And yeah. He was able to yep. cook again after two or three games. No, exactly. I mean, it, 
it makes no sense, you know, and I honestly don't mind Miller as a coach, but at the same time, you know, when you're bringing this amount of trouble, I mean, you better really dot your I's and cross your T's if you think you're that innocent, which his case to me compared to the others is so just weird. He, uh, everybody said, you know, oh, he's caught on tape with that $100,000 bribe, yet guess what? Not even he, the university, or the people involved could listen to that wiretap. So how is someone on ESPN able to hear it, you know, let alone that source? And yet they never played it in court. And then on top of that, you're adding he signed a new contract after he got caught, you know, with the wiretap and the legal trouble that he said, you know, if I broke any NCAA rules, you can find me over a million dollars. So it's like... I don't know what to believe. That whole scenario is just ridiculous because he's not – He so far in my book, he hasn't been one of the ones, unlike Self and Will Wade, who said in text messages and, and stuff like that, uh, did they get the payment or we're going to make him one big you-know-what offer that he can't refuse like Will Wade. Exactly. I mean, it's just – Well, let's I not get to the point that, oh, Duke, Duke won't have – Zion come and speak because you know you can't tell me Zion didn't get paid. KU offered him a butt ton of money, housing, everything, and he passed that up to mm -hmm. go to Duke. So you can't tell me he didn't get paid to go to Duke. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no way that that guy didn't get paid in some way, shape, or form. In fact, even a guy who testified in the Miller case even said, you know, don't think that Kentucky, Duke, and North Carolina don't have their quote unquote paying system down. They're just good at hiding it, but they have their system, excuse me. But, uh, you know, it's just an unfortunate thing for college basketball. And then, you know, off the FBI topic, it's just an unfortunate thing for one of, you know, the, one of the best coaches in all of college basketball, in my opinion, the Gray Marshall uh, story, which is really unfortunate. Um, but, you know, whether he's suspended for the year or less, whatever, hopefully. I mean, my opinion is hopefully he stays. But you I guess, know, you know. You know where he's at right now because he hasn't been at practice in three days? I think he's at anger management classes. Maybe that's oh, what probably. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Goose problem, man. <laughs> you know? It's pretty apparently, you know. Yep. So, yeah, no, I wonder if Jack Nichols, Nicholas is, you know, <laughs> his uh, uh, anger management coach, you know. But, um, you know, whether Wichita State, you know, keeps Greg Marshall or not, I believe they're still going to be in good hands, you know. And I noticed in your last video, which was very well done, by the way, um, one one coach that went under the radar that I never even thought about till tonight, and I'm sure that they would probably – no chance of getting him, but you know, it's still an option. Is uh, John Thompson the third? You know, yeah. I just and, uh, I don't know if he would do it though. That's the problem. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but you know what? It's still a good situation for him. You got a great fan base who backs the team. It's not like you're going into an empty stadium pre-COVID. You know what I mean? And. And you guys have a track record, you know, for 13 years. And even prior to that with Mark Turgeon and anybody else that you can think of. But those were the two main guys so well, far. Here's which the thing, too, I'm tired of hearing about is I'm tired of seeing tweets about WSU has reached out to Danny Manning. Please, God, mm -hmm. do not bring Danny Manning into this. No, the, the, only, the only way you want Danny Manning is if it's only an assistant role, you know. He was terrible at Wake Forest. And, uh, I mean, it's disappointing because he had such clout with getting big men. I mean, look at Kansas and what he did for them over the years and bringing all the big men. And then when he left Kansas, KU to an extent has been, you know, um, kind of having trouble recruiting big men. But then, you know, while Danny Manning was at Wake Forest, he wasn't getting quite the recruits. You know, and, you know, for somebody – Did he even have one winning season? I don't – you know what? It's that is a good 80. question. He Burgess might have had one. Forest. <laughs> right. But, I mean, it's just yeah, nothing to go, yay, he's great. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's the unfortunate thing. I really, wish, I really wish Dad Matta was healthy because 
-hmm. he was such a great coach at Ohio State, and then he had those back issues. And, of course, right. he knows Wichita State because we played him in the Elite Eight, and he gave us so much credit. So he knows the powerhouse Wichita State can be, but just with his unhealthiness and stuff. And I guess yeah. they threw out their Ben Jacobson from Northern Iowa. We know damn sure that he knows Wichita State. And yeah. I thought he would love to come in here and coach if Marshall, depending on Marshall's right. thing, if he gets fired or not. But right. there's, and you know there's what? so many coaches out there that would love to come in here and coach. Oh, exactly. And you know what? You're not in the Valley, which is absolutely yeah. atrocious. And so, you know, the Northern Iowa coach, you know, knows obviously Wichita State from the days of playing there. And you know what? You're in a better conference. So it'd be a big stepping stone if you would like to take it. Um, but yeah, no, that's a good, that would be a good pickup, you know, but we'll see what happens with Marshall first because, you know, it's just a shame what's going on with him. But, you know, I've always joked that if Arizona ever got rid of Sean Miller, hi, Greg Marshall, and I know people will probably give me flack of, you don't want him, he's got anger problems. Well, sure, but you know what? Everyone deserves kind of a second chance and I don't know. You I think know. Arizona would go after Archie just to throw Sean Miller under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Bring in his brother. Why not? <laughs> you know, I think Archie. You know, it's funny because Archie Miller actually uh, was at Arizona at Miller's first year as an assistant. So oh, yeah, that's yeah. You know, so sense. so why not? You know, I wouldn't mind it. But now here's um, the thing. I don't know if it would happen, but. Maybe WSU would consider Forbes, even though Forbes just made the switch from East Tennessee State to Wake Forest. But see, I don't think Forbes would – he wouldn't do that. He would stay at Wake. I mean – Yeah, I mean, he's in the ACC, and, you know, everybody thinks that's the cream of the crop for conferences and whatnot, you know. What about, what about Chris James, New Mexico State? Now with his – That's, past, that's though, a possibility. That, yeah, that's a possibility. Point. Well, it's kind of funny you mentioned them because they uh, were actually talking to Tucson, you know, seeing if they can come play because I guess they need a, a new area to play in, you know. Oh, yeah, I saw I that today. So. But, you know, I just thought that was interesting. But, you know, I mean, he'd be a good coach. You know, New Mexico State has been in it in the last few years, and it's not just kind of a – uh, one hit wonder team that you know he coaches to the big dance and then kind of falls off a cliff until like you know his team is you know older and more <laughs> mature but you know but he's been keeping it pretty consistent there in New Mexico at New Mexico State so it'd be a I think a good pickup if you can lure him away exactly now let's get to <clears throat> preseason rankings Gonzaga fills it out, number one. I don't know how I feel about that. Just, Gonzaga seems yeah. overrated to me year in, year out. I just don't know. I mean, yeah. that's just a weak conference. I mean. No, it, <laughs> it, it, it's weak. It's weak. But you know what? I'll give them credit because at least in the uh, non-conference, they're not afraid to play anyone and actually want to play people, you know, unlike some teams out there. Yeah. Who are, have the credibility. We won't just, say their names. <laughs> yeah, we won't say names at all. And uh, anyway, yes, their conference is crap, you know, and I'm not afraid to say that. And uh, but you know, I mean, he. I'll give Mark Few credit because he's built that program to where it is today, and it's actually a pretty sustainable you know, program in a crap conference, but can hang with the big boys year in, year out. So, you know what, kudos to him, you know. And, I mean, you know, he, does have a national, he does have a national championship under his belt, so. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's just, you know, he's he's an interesting guy, you know, <laughs> and I think he's definitely top seven or eight in the country as far as coaches, as far as I'm concerned. So. You know, but we'll see. I mean, I do, I do like, I don't mind Gonzaga, you know, but at the same time, I find them annoying just because once they hit the quote unquote number one ranking halfway through the season, you know, they're not going to relinquish that because they're in such a terrible conference. Now, so you, I believe Arizona was top 10 in those preseason rankings, if I saw right. 
No, actually, they're not. They're actually, ASU is actually ranked. ASU. Uh, USL, ASU. Was and you know what? Even though I'm not a Sun Devils fan by any stretch of the imagination, um, I'll, give, I'll give Bobby Hurley and their crew um, some credit, especially since now they got Remy Martin back, who, is, who was their point guard the last two seasons. And he is fast, and he's really good, who can transform – again and you know what having him back to go with some of the talent that they're getting um that they're getting as freshmen and some of the returners they're definitely one to watch now the one team i find odd you know that was picked first over them believe it or not was ucla and uh you know our know good the, friend there. the cue ball man cue Nick ball. Cronin, <laughs> you know the wine. Um, yes um you know, I, I thought it'd take probably about two to, well, three years per se to really get him back into the swing of things of being quote unquote UCLA. Cause let's, let's face it, you know, the last, oh, I'd say about eight years, UCLA has been nothing, but we got the talent, but we're lazy, lazy, lazy. So, you know, if he can bring him back to prominence, kudos to him. Well, I believe you know. the big white boy graduated, so he's gone this year. Yeah. Yep. Well. And, uh, yeah, but they still have their point guard, too, that Tiger guy. Oh, I forget yeah. his name. But, you know, he's really good. And some of their uh, guys were actually pretty decent shooters. But, you know, it's just about buying into the system. I don't think last year they really bought into it halfway through the season and then – the next half, they started going, oh, was this what you meant, coach? Okay, well, now I see, you know, and then started making a run. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, it is UCLA basketball, and when you think that they're coming back, they tend to disappoint. But who knows about this year? But if it were me, I'd put Arizona State number one and then maybe UCLA, you know, on down. But, you know, just kind of funny how Sean Miller today in his press conference, it, he, they were picked to finish fifth. And uh, he was like, wow, that's really generous, you know, because he <laughs> honestly thought he'd finish seventh or whatever. That's where he thought well, hey, in his mind. That should make the so, team feel good. Oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> especially. But you got to know we lost like a whole bunch of people last year. You know, and then the ones that are coming back were freshmen last year, sophomores this year, who are, who are going to be playing a bigger role and everybody is a wild card. But what makes the whole thing funny about this season is we got like seven recruits coming in and they're all from Europe. So we call them Passport University men, not the Wildcats, <laughs> Passport University. There you go. <laughs> So then again, college basketball starts two weeks from tomorrow, November 25th, I believe it is. There will be some preseason tournaments. Let's just hope that they get them underway. We don't get a bunch of COVID results, and then college basketball has to be canceled. So two weeks away, college basketball starts. We are looking forward to it. It will be a shortened season, probably three-week shortened season, so there will still be at least 25 games hopefully played per team except for the Ivy League which was canceled as we stated at the beginning of the show so that will be our show for tonight we will have more college basketball talk coming in as the season gets closer again we're keeping an eye on Greg Marshall see what comes out again to everybody that watched my last video I apologize I moved ahead thinking he was fired and followed Jeff Goodman who just doesn't understand where he gets his sources at so I apologize for that but we will keep an eye on Greg Marshall and hopefully we get news here shortly. So go ahead and subscribe to our channel, like our video, comment if you have any comments. We will see you guys next time.